Welcome, future masters. Make sure you like this video. It's going to be a blockbuster. We're going to work on visualization and some pattern recognition that will help you in your future games. So, enough with the baloney. Let's get to business. Okay, well, hmm, that's very bizarre. I don't know what this guy is actually planning. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Well, I don't know. Gotta take this guy. I mean, it's just check, forking our rook and king. So. Okay, that's what it wanted to do. Well, that was obvious. So here, what's going to happen is pretty simple. White's going to capture the h4 pawn and then play g4, etc. That takes five moves, six moves. So it's one plus five. It always takes five moves to queen from the back square. So we go first. So his sixth move is going to reply to our six. Now here, when you're on the back, the back square of the seventh rank, uh, a7 or a6, it still takes five. So five for us, his fifth move will be to move to the seventh square, which we own. So he can't straight up do that because we just take it. His sixth move is going to be here. But our fifth move, queens, his fifth move would be here. We make a six, he queens. So it's not going to queen. So look at this. We're going to do this. Now, this is just knowing these truths that I'm telling you. Now, I'm going to show you the calculation if you want to do it that way. Either way is fine. Whichever way you get it is, is fine. I get it without having to calculate it, but let's just do it. King takes a5, g4. A4, G5, A3, G6, A7. Wait a second. That can't be right. Oh no, he's not first. We're first. Sorry, my mistake. A5, King takes. A4, G4, A3, G5, A2, G6. Queen, he cannot play G7. Just like I told you. So it doesn't matter how you figure this out. The right answer is the right answer. So I do it by, I, I make any strong player make sh mental shortcuts based upon his prior knowledge. Like I did. But that doesn't mean you can't use an alternate method to come to the same response. The only difference is calculation method is going to take this is a this is a I call this is a I see this as a rook um, uh, corner mating pattern is what I call it sorry there you go take the rook corner mating pattern right here man you take my pawn king takes bishop knight checks king to g8 he's got literally nothing I have defenders on the light squares and the dark squares. That's even worse. He lost a piece and traded his queen away. He has no chance a piece down in the end game. Whoops, mate. Not whoops, but getting close, baby. We do have a simple move. Queen to g4 check. King Queen takes free bishop. That's enough to win. This is a classic. All right, now one of the things I'm going to teach you, block, block, block. That means this king is trapped. I, I look at these as blockers. They, they're putting the king in jail. Let's checkmate him. So we can hit e8 with this rook and queen. So we have two attackers here. He's got one defender. Two beats one all day long, baby. Checkmate. Whoops, mate. Whoops, mate. Oh, sorry. 
that that's a mating attack not a not a direct whoops whoops checkmate check king to f8 this is the visualization check on h7 king to f8 check on h8 king to e7 queen takes g7 check he's toast whoops knight fork and oh that's hilarious discovered check with his king This is bump and score. He's got blocker, blocker, blocker. The the bishop counts the same whether it's a pawn or our piece. So he's going to get back rank mated with a bump and score. Bump him in to the corner. Score two versus one checkmate. Bump and score again. Block, block, block. We bump him away and then you know go to the back rank bump and score block 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 whoops now you see that this king and queen are knight fork uh, dessert but if I play knight to e7 he's gonna play knight takes free knight so can we get rid of this knight <laughs> why yes we can bishop takes knight this is a technique i call connect the dots you see what you want you want this you see there's the, a direct stopper of your idea so find a way to get rid of the direct defender so this is actually known as a removal of defender technique now i'm going to play bishop takes knight he can still play this move queen takes bishop but I'm still going to get the same fork. Bishop takes knight. It did not matter how he captured. Okay, now what does this do? I don't know. It looks to me like simple. Knight takes. My queen is guarded. All my pieces are guarded if I play knight takes knight. He doesn't have queen takes pawn check does nothing bishop takes rook takes rook takes queen takes he's never going to be able to do anything to me visualization shows that i have this easily in hand it's guarded by the pawn too stupid trade off all the pieces and lose a piece while you do it so i enter the end game one piece ahead fantastic Well, I see a basic queen to f3 check, double attacking this knight. He goes into the corner, knight takes knight, forks the rook and queen too. I mean, it's just, it's just nasty. He's got nothing. Yeah, that's the answer, genius. Well, this is a horrible mistake by Black. We're going to play Queen takes Queen. His only defender of his back rank. Rook takes Queen. Rook to E8 check. Rook to D8. Rook takes Rook checkmate. This is what visualization does. It makes this move total as they say. It's exactly what I told you would happen. Now, that's important. I mean, that's the basic sequence of visualization. You're going to predict the future. So, what do we do here? That's a good question. My gut reaction is I don't want to take that e pawn. This doesn't seem like it's really doing anything that spectacular. Oh, man. I mean, knight takes e4 doesn't really seem to do much. And neither does bishop takes knight. Oh, I have knight to c4 attacking his queen. How does this work? Where is this queen going to go? I own this. I own every square except uh, knight c4, queen a6, 
b5 pawn fork queen a5 pawn takes free knight is how my dad would say it so no need to uh despair use visualization to kick butt well we got this nice queen check on e3 what happens here check and this is checkmate no matter what he does pretty basic stuff right we're going to play queen to e2 well he's going to go check king d1 queen e2 check king c1 queen c2 is mate now these early problems are pretty easy but what this is doing is just you know warming you up practice to execute let me introduce you to my dad's number one rule what's he trying to do to me now if you look at this the answer should be fairly obvious he's gonna play rook to c8 check queen takes rook to c8 mate so we must check this guy and if we stop checking him it better be mate because we're going to get checkmated if we stop checking him fortunately queen d6 is devastating doesn't matter if he goes to g3 or h4 queen to g4 is checkmate but you can never be too careful well 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 now here's a classic that you may or may not know the move for this position is rook to d8. The reason is it's a skewer. You're skewering this knight and the d1 square. But there's nothing on the d1 square. Yeah, the d1 square is a checkmate square. You see this? This is checkmate. So we're actually, this doesn't happen very often. But we're going to play rook to d8, and then if he moves the knight, we checkmate him. Doesn't matter, it's a forced checkmate no matter where he goes. If he doesn't move the knight, we're gonna take the knight. Well, depending. He's got a checkmate on us. No, we got Bishop back to f8. He's dead. Rook takes free knight, baby. Bishop to f8. Sucker. Okay, now what? Well, I'd like to check this guy, but eh, I could. I don't know. It's not great either. Hmm. I don't know. I have this idea. I got to see if it works. Of, of e5, e takes f6. But he's got three defenders on there, so that didn't really... You know, it's not great. Well, that's okay. The idea is e5, e takes f6, rook attacks queen with a discovery. So he couldn't play this because bishop would take. So e5, if he plays bishop takes, I think it's a mistake. But his bishop is loose. So he's, his problem is his bishop is loose. Now he does have actually... E5, he could play queen to d7, guarding his bishop. And then, if I take it, he takes it, it's fine, doesn't matter. And then e takes f6 in any sequence is no big deal. Well, I guess technically it is. e takes f6, he'd have to play rook takes. Because bishop takes, his queen takes g6 check, he's getting mated. So e5 is a killer move, because this bishop is undefended, and we're threatening to play this e5, and then we're threatening to play e takes f6 with a discovered attack against this queen. So e5 is the move. Correcto. Bishop takes bishop is the best move for us. Okie dokie. Well, man, I'm just knight guarding this square. I see bishop, h3 check, king to here, and... Well, we could play knight to f3. Yes, knight f3 check, queen takes knight, queen to e1 checkmate. It's a deflection. This is killer. This is killer. Well, you know, actually, 
It's really funny. Queen to e1 check is also checkmating with knight to f3 check. Both of these moves are checkmate. Knight f3 check. Queen takes knight. Queen to e1 is mate. Queen to e1 check. Queen takes knight to f3 is checkmate. Very bizarre. Oh no, sorry. Queen doesn't get it here because he takes it with check. So it is knight to f3 check, queen takes, and then checkmate. I was trying to figure out what, what I was missing. So here is a clever move. Look, look at the position. Why? This doesn't come up very often. Why did white play knight to f3? I'm going to show you. Because... We were threatening to take his knight and then play rook to here. All right? That's a checkmate. So he plays knight to f3, closing this off. However, there's a problem that we have a deflection of his knight with queen to e1 check. This is a devastating move. Knight takes queen, and then we play that same rook checkmate. That's a... That's a a harder move to, to spot. It's not a 1400 move. Okay. King and pawn end games. Well, if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I am a master and then some of king and pawn end games. So what happens here is pretty basic stuff. Earlier I told you, number one, the, the pawn on the beginning square takes five moves to queen. So... The problem is when whenever black plays h5, the king has to be on the d file to stop it. If he doesn't make it to the d file, he's dead. What happens here is that we're in the square of this pawn. We're also in the square of this pawn. This is a five by five. This is a two by two. We're going to take this pawn and he's going to try and queen his pawn, but he cannot queen it because our king is there. So, and we have the ability to make it, we can go, king takes pawn, he can play, the move he wants to play is king to b6, but he's not going to play it, because we're not going to let him. This is, would be winning for him, king to b6, and king to b7 is the shepherd square. This is where his king rules, we cannot allow that. So, by taking this pawn, we prevent king to b6 and king to b7. If he tries to play king to a6, we can play, well, it doesn't really matter at that point. We could we could play king to b8, and that's the end of it. So, that's fine. We don't have to worry about this guy. We can stop his pawn without anything. His king can never shepherd this pawn. He's trying to make his way to the d file. If we go king to b7, he'll go king to c5, and the game is a draw. Because we play a5 on the next move, and he goes king to d5. He's in the square, 5 by 5. This is the only move. Too late, buddy. Now, I needed to mention this. The, our king has been in the neutralization square. And that's what the square represents. It represents where your king needs to be to neutralize the enemy pawn. And if the pawn doesn't move to threaten your king's neutralization. You don't move the king, you just move the pawn. That's why I haven't moved my king. I don't need to move it. Okie dokie. We got... We're okay. He has no mate threat yet. We have rook to g1 check. What the heck does that do? Well, rook to g1 forces rook to h3, and then we play rook to d5. I mean, sorry. Rook to g1 threatens, forces king to h3. One of my rules is, if he has only one move with his king, you're winning. Rook to g1, king to h3, only move, that means we're winning. Rook to d5. We're going to play rook to h5, unless he plays queen takes rook, because we have a checkmate. All right, there you go. Easy win. 
So, what now? Um, hmm. Well, we have an interesting idea. All right. One of the things we have is we have, an, we have a pinned knight, which is key. And that means everything guarded by this knight is not really guarded by the knight. So <clears throat> this knight, this h7 knight is guarded by this f6 knight and the king, but really it's just the king. So this pin is, is helpful to us. This rook on e8 is also only guarded by the queen, not the knight. So here's the dealio. If I play knight takes h7, king takes h7 is perfectly fine. But the but and now the knight is no longer pinned. So if I played rook takes rook, he won't play queen takes rook. He'll play knight takes rook. So these are the moves you need to play to win. Is knight takes h7 and rook takes e8. Now that knight takes h7 first is wrong. Rook takes rook first is correct because only the queen defends and I cannot go there. That's illegal. So we're going to play rook takes rook. He's going to play queen takes rook. Now this knight is guarded. This king is actually guarding two knights and he can only guard one of them. So rook takes rook, queen takes rook, knight takes h7. This knight is now double attacked. He has to play king takes h7, queen takes f6, free knight, you lose. So rook takes rook. This is all about the order of capture to remove the defender of the f6 knight. The queen takes free knight, you lose. That's what my dad would say. Well, <clears throat> interestingly, the bishop stops a mate on e2, the queen stops a mate on d2. But the problem is, I'm still gonna play a whoops mate, queen f2 check, he can't move because of my bishop. Whoops mate. Queen to take c6 check. If he goes to b8 with his king, queen to b7 checkmate. If he goes queen to c7, we good question. We check him here. Queen to a6 check. Yes. Queen to a6 check because we still attack a8. He can't play queen to b7, that's mate. And if he goes king to b8, then queen to a6 is mate. So when we take this c6 pawn, there's two possible mates. Queen takes b, queen to b7 or queen to a8. And we, we, can, we can get one or the other, but we have to let him decide which one we get. So <clears throat> this does not checkmate him. He's got knight back or queen back. This check is a devastator. This check forces his queen to b7 or his king to b8. And whichever one he goes to, we're going to mate him on the other square. So, queen to b7, queen takes b7 is checkmate. Well, we do have a really basic sequence. When you see this knight and bishop here with this, with a, usually it's a bishop will be here, but this queen works just as fine. We're going to pawn fork this guy on d5. d4, attacking the bishop. He moves away d5. He can't take. This blocks him from playing bishop takes knight, which is key. In visualization, I see this. Now it's just d5 guarded by two pieces. Pawn takes queen, knight takes queen check, pawn takes free knight. That desperado wins a piece for, for white. Well, that's kind of basic. <clears throat> or is it is the question I ask well hmm. remember my dad's number one rule what's he threatening to do what's he trying to do to me he's going to try and play bishop or queen takes f7 eventually it's not much of a threat yet ha I have a good move for you, buddy. I am looking at this move. Hang on a second. 
Okay. I'm looking at this move. Rook takes h3 check. Pawn takes, queen takes, king to g1. Queen to g3 check. What does this do? And that doesn't do much of a diddly squat. No. Not queen to g3 check, stupid. Queen to g4 check. And I'm going to eat this rook. One, two, three. And we're even. So what? Rook takes pawn, pawn takes rook, queen takes pawn check, king to g3, queen to g4 check, king to, I don't know, f2, queen takes rook. Hooray! We're three pawns versus three pawns in the end game. So, which is good in the context of we were getting, we were, we were being beaten. But, uh, Hard to say that that's really that great. We do have possibly rook to e1, rook takes, queen takes, king to h2. And then I would like, unfortunately, I cannot play bishop to d6. Hmm, that's a killer. Yeah, it might be that the might be the combination here is just to take the pawn and get the getting the equal uh, material situation, so we're not losing this end game because we're kind of losing this end game. We can't really go berserk because he'll. King, he'll attack us with his queen and bishop. The problem we have, and the problem of both sides, this is a bishops of opposite colored endgame, which means attacks for white on white squares are going to be monster, and attack for black on the dark squares is going to be monster, because there's no bishop to defend those squares on the opposite side. So, yes, taking the equality... I think is the correct move. No, actually, we could play. I didn't realize this. Bishop to c5 is the crisscross checkmate. My bad. This is the crisscross checkmate. In tournaments, you, you play this and it will happen. I played the right move for a mediocre reason. But there was, there was two reasons you could play it. The mediocre reason of getting the rook back or the correct one was for the crisscross checkmate this is a whoops mate the queen self seals the g7 square so he cannot run queen a1 whoops oh dude you're so dead if you don't see it pause the video take a couple of minutes and we'll be right back in three two one this is rook f2 check and he's got a problem i'll either play depending on his move he goes to g1 queen takes g3 as check and mate on h1 if he goes to h1 i can play rook wait a second i play rook takes bishop queen takes rook king takes rook at the very least At the very least, I have that. I still think that this, this uh, checkmate here is a monster. He doesn't have a defender that can defend h2. If I play queen takes g3, I'm threatening queen h2 mate or rook h2 mate. He could check me with his uh, rook, but it doesn't amount to much. Yeah, I don't think rook takes bishop, queen takes, king takes. With a four versus three pawn situation with queens in the end game is really very good. That's why. Yeah, well, good luck with that. And I don't know, king to here. I mean, he had queen to here, but I would just go king to a7. You know, queen to e8 check was not good enough. 
All right, pretty basic stuff. Bishops of opposite color. Well, like I said before, one of the things about bishops of opposite color is that your attacks on the color of your bishop are extra powerful because he has no piece to defend against it. Turns out, this is a whoops. Notice his king has no squares. We check him, it's mate. So bishop f1 check, e2 is the only blocker. Bishop takes e2, checkmate. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Oh man, are you kidding me? Queen to f5. I'm threatening checkmate. You can't take my knight. This, my, I, my f6 pawn has two defenders. He's got two attackers. When you have two attackers versus two defenders, the defense wins. He, he will fail if he takes the f6 pawn. But now he's, he's, he's destroyed because he can't take my knight. I just checkmate him. That move does stop the checkmate for one move. Now I can play queen takes rook. He can't take my knight because it's still checkmate. Check, knight goes up, rook, queen takes knight, check, and then queen g7. But he can take this pawn and whoop de doo Knight takes pawn, knight takes knight, queen takes knight, queen checks. Pfft, whatever, bro. This wins for me. Oh, this is terrible for him. We're going to play ring around the rosy. This f6 pawn's a rosy. Queen e7 check, king g6, queen takes g7 check. This is just brute force technique right here. King 2, h5 is a possibility. G4 is checkmating with my queen on G7. This is what this is the power that visualization gives you. So queen checks on E7, King G6, Queen G7, King H5, G4 is checkmate. So he can't go there. King to F5, G4 check once again. King two, E5 is completely playable. Now we could play what? We could play queen to e7. If he doesn't have this. He could go here. Queen to e7 check. He's on e5. Then what does he do? King f4. G pawn is already played. Well, that's a good question, dude. Oh, when he plays king to e5, I could just, well, that doesn't work either. I don't know, Davy. Blam, 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 blam. Check f5. Maybe I could do something better. King to f5. Let me think about this for a second. g4 is pretty good. King to e5. Oh, I would just play. I, I do have king to g5. I mean, queen to g5 when he goes here. He could go here, and I would just take his knight. Good enough, man. So I have g4. He wants to play f4 is another story. g4. King e5, queen g5, wins a knight. g4, king to f4, queen to h6, check. You want to take this, really? Ugh, I don't know. Man, you're going to get destroyed by rook to g1. That's the move I anticipated. King to h6. He's got problems. You can't take this because rook to h1, I mean rook to g1 is a nasty move. Well, I told you you couldn't take it. You took it and uh, adios, muchacho. That was a brute force. Wow, that's really, that was a brute force execution.
but you have to be careful and that's what I was doing with visualization it's a fairly easy win but you have to be careful because one slip up and you blow a golden opportunity <sighs> so now to me the move that looks like the devastator is not knight to c6 check which isn't bad it does win a knight but we're not here to win a knight we'd still be a rook down we're going to checkmate this guy well a rook and a queen down sorry knight g6 check guards every square he can play knight e7 after which rook takes e7 is checkmate or he can play queen to e3 rook takes e3 then knight to e7 and he's checkmated It's like it's, it's like I'm seeing it in the future. And no, I don't have the winning lotto numbers. The visualization of chess doesn't work that way. But it was fantastic. What is he trying to do to me? Two knights on e6. Very bogus. So, well, I guess it's not bad. I got a knight and a king. I'm all right. So let's look at... The obvious move, pawn takes pawn check. Sometimes the obvious move is the best move. One of the one of the things that's going to happen is that when we do that, he's going to play queen takes. Knight takes f4, unleashes a double attack on this knight with a discovery, well, I mean, with a pin on his queen, on his knight, so he cannot move the knight because the rook would take queen. So pawn takes pawn check. Now, he could also play king h1. He could play king to h1. That's a legit move. But I'd still play knight takes f4. I'm going to chop this knight off with that rook. So we go here. We chop this dude. Knight takes f4. This is what I'm looking at here, visualization. You're seeing what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this with a triple attack on h3. But more importantly, this knight is pinned to the queen. No matter what he does, even h4 is no good. I would just play rook takes knight because that pawn is pinned. So knight takes here. He could play rook takes, probably the best move to try and protect h4. Rook takes knight. Then he could move, I don't know, something to the tune of maybe queen to f3. Good question. Wow. That's nasty. Knight to here. I mean, sorry, rook takes knight, threatens, queen takes h3, and possibly rook to g4 at some point. Also, if he moves his rook away, this queen is defended by the rook, so he could make his queen lose. But this, to me, is the correct move. What it boils down to this, okay, let me explain. We could try trading queens with queen takes g5. Let's look at this end game. How many pawns does he have? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's got knight takes b7. We don't want an end game. So I think we're better off taking rook takes knight because our attack is still strong. So we would take with the not with the queen. Queen takes g5 if we had a better end game position. He's also threatening. What's he threatening to do to me? He's sort of, he's almost threatening knight takes e6. But actually he is threatening that if I don't take his knight. So I got to take his knight, but take with the rook. If he wants to take this pawn, yeah, I have three guys and I'm threatening queen, H, queen takes h3. He can't take this pawn. So knight takes, rook takes knight, keeps the attack bubbling. Queen takes knight, queen takes queen, rook takes, knight takes b7, and I've just squandered my advantage. My advantage is I have more pieces around his king than he's got defenders. So you don't want to trade these pieces off unless you have a concrete advantage. 
And the minimum of that would be a one pawn advantage in the end game pass like this one if you're going to win this by force. Then it would be okay, that'd be good. But this pawn is so weak, you're not getting squat. Ha! Now we're in business. We are in business. We have, that's a good question. We can play. Huh. Uh, well, good question. Well, like I said, we could play rook to g4. I don't know that that's really that great of a move. Oh, we have a better move than that. We have knight to g6. That looks like it's getting somewhere. This queen's under attack. Queen to... that He can't really play queen to e3 because I have f4. And there's no way he's going to trade his rook for my knight and pawn. Yeah, he saw the hammer coming. The hammer coming is f4, allowing me to play rook to g3, triple attacking on this guy. That's why he played queen takes rook. Now, no human got master would do that. They would just resign. Or play queen e3 and pray that you don't see it. So, using my visualization skills, you saw me run 40 and 0 like it was, like it was candy. So, that's fantastic. All right. Now, this is another example of me and my king and pawn endgame skills. But, but that's not king and pawns. It's king and rooks. It's going to be king and pawns. <laughs> okay. So, one of the ways you win these endgames is through positional advantage. The other way you're going to win this is going to be to exchange the pieces to a king and pawn endgame that's winning for your side, hopefully. In this case, rook takes rook, king takes rook. His problem, his pawn has a 4x4 four four square, so I just play king to uh, d5. I've, the king has now neutralized this pawn. He will never score. The problem is, I have a 5x5, five five and this king is way the heck out of dodge. It doesn't take much to win this. This says this is a 21, about a 2200 problem. It isn't. I would have whipped this problem when I was 1500. King d5 is the winning move. He's still outside of the square. He needs to be here right now. He needed to be king to f5. He'd have a shot. He's got no shot. My king is in his square. I don't have to move this king unless this pawn moves. So I move my pawn. Moved it, I move it. Too bad, you didn't move your pawn, so I moved mine. You moved it, I moved my king. You didn't move it, I moved my pawn. It's basic stuff. I could have calculated all the that entire sequence, but that was not necessary. What was necessary was understanding the principles that made it so much easier. Knowing the square of the pawn and where you need to be and where you are makes all the difference in the world. It's a total, it's a total giveaway. It's super easy. All right, now we have a similar situation. We're down a pawn, but guess what? It's really funny because under normal circumstances, black has the outside passed pawn otherwise known as the distant pass pawn, which is usually an advantage. It's not an advantage here. And the reason why is because my king is in the square of his pawn. His king is in the square of this pawn temporarily. Problem is I can box him out and he can never get to my pawn. He cannot do the same to me. So every time he makes a king move, I'm going to make a king move that blocks him. And I'm going to queen first, and that's what's going to get him. C5 is the right move. We're in the, we're in the opposition. Opposition means he's, he's, he's boxed out. If he plays king f4 to try and get to my queen square, king to d4 will stop that. If he goes this way, the backside, king f6, I don't even care. I'll just queen directly. 
His one and only shot after c5 will be king to f4. I will play king to d4 and close him out. He'd have one more shot, king to f3, and then I would play king to d3, boxing him out again with opposition. He is destroyed. Okay, my king is in his square. His king is in my square. Now, you got one shot to be in my square, buddy. He didn't take it. I'm still in his square. He can no longer get to my pawn. Four by four. I'm going to push here. He needs to be here. He cannot jump to, to d3. I'm sorry, d6. Black king cannot jump to d6 in one move. Therefore, when I play f6, he's dead lost. Because he moves his pawn, my king will eat this. His king is now no longer capable of catching my pawn. Square is now three by three. So I need to be at the minimum at F3. Well, that's where I'm going. Two by two, I need to be on G2. That's where I'm going. Too late, buddy. Uh, I told you, that was a 2200 problem and I made it look like it was just candy because it is candy to me because I'm a master and then some on King and Pawn end games. Well, now what? Hmm. Okay, one of the things I'm looking at, that's, this just sticks out in my mind, is this corner mating pattern of this. This is not the move that wins, but this is key to the move that wins. We're trying to set this up, if possible, or make use of this d-file restriction by playing something to the tune of queen to g3. Queen to g3 check, his only move queen to f2. That's easy to see. Uh, so the question is, what do we have after that? Queen to f2. Trading queens is not in the, not in the cards. We are two pieces down. We're going to have to finish this guy. Like Mortal Kombat. So, man, and that guy, he's also, what's he trying to do to me? That's what my dad would say. Rook takes queen and rook takes bishop. What a freak. So, queen to g3 check is not as helpful as one might hope it would be. Ugh. But let's go with it. Queen g3, queen to f2. Nasty stuff. We don't even have a check after that move. The best that we have technically, well, we have queen g3, queen f2, queen to g6, or queen to h4, where the queen guards the bishop. whoop de doo That is a whoop de doo all right. Oh, baby. No three bob, we got a hammer. We have a hammer, folks. Let me get a drink and I will show this beauty to you. We have a hammer. This, I'm gonna show you this position for those of you who have made it here. I'm gonna make it worth your while because this is why you master or try to master chess visualization. Oh man, am I going to show you a move that you are going to knock your socks off. Okay, so here's the dealio. I was correct. It's fairly basic to play queen to g3 and get out of this rook's line, right? Queen f2 is the only move. Remember my rule? If he's got only one move, you're winning. Well, guess what? He's got one move and we're winning. Let me show you this position. Yes. Remember what I told you about this rook and bishop? It looked real important to me, and it sure was. What the queen f2 does is it seals the, the king's tomb. I have this move. This is what I'm channeling my inner Bobby Fischer. Crunch! Queen takes c3 check. If he takes it, with pawn takes, this is checkmate, corner mating pattern. So, 
He can't take it. He can do this. Well, I have another move. Now I'm going to channel my inner Gary Kasparov. You lose, buddy. That is why you do the work for visualization. Devastation. That was an awesome move. I'm super happy that I got to play that move. Well, this is all very interesting. What do we do here? Man, I don't see that we're winning this, but I guess we are somehow. Oh, uh, well, more or less, I guess that's cool. I'm, I'm thinking the move re revolves around this bishop on c4 with rook takes rook. Bishop cannot take this rook. So rook takes rook check. Bishop cannot take this rook because queen takes free queen. Rook takes rook. King to f1 forced. It's sort of like, you know, the only move that doesn't lose is that, so we're winning. Queen to f4 check. It's not much, but it's, you know, it's the best I have. Um, the possibility here. He could go to f1 again. I mean, uh, you go to g1. I'm trying to figure out if I have a knight fork. My queen's on f4. I play knight e5. I'm double attacking his bishop. So, and with my queen on f4, he doesn't have a check to my king. So I'm thinking rook takes rook, king takes rook, queen f4 check. King to g1, e1, uh, e2, with knight to e5, bringing the knight closer. You really don't have a lot going for it, but, I mean, you, know, you got whatever you have. I do have, you know, ideas of queen to e3 check as well. Hard to say. But nothing else. Queen takes queen, bishop takes queen. So what is what my dad would say. And then rook takes rook doesn't do anything. Rook takes rook, king takes rook, queen takes queen, bishop takes queen. Again, you've got nothing. I think the only thing is rook takes rook check, king takes queen to f4 check. Is, is the only thing they have that's actually threatening anything. I cannot understand why... This guy would bring his king forward. Maybe the other moves are worse. To me, knight to e5 is the obvious move. Yes, it wasn't. We'll figure out what it was. Is this guy getting checkmated? Rook h, f7, king g5, only move. All right. f4, check. Now he has king to h5. Or king to h6, rook to h7, check. In either case, you're dead. Yeah, f4, check. You, you know, you normally would be kind of reticent to open up a discovered attack. Oh, f4, check. Knight takes f4 is check. So f4, check does not work. This is what visualization does for you. It helps you spot the obvious move. F4 check looks winning. Knight takes F4 counter check. Uh-oh. Terrible. L losing. So it's okay. We could play uh, not rook, F5, rook E5. He's got bishop F5. We want to check him where he cannot interpose. Let's look at H4 check. So H4 check with um king to h5 i'd have rook to h7 check king to g4 f3 check is fine because the knight does not have the discovery however this is getting a little Muddy is the word.
So this is getting a little muddy. So let's unmuddy this, shall we? H4 check. He could it would H4 check if he ever goes to G4. F3 check forces him back to H5, then Rook H7. It doesn't really matter. And he's mated. Yeah, he's toast. So Rook H7, G4, F3 check, and he doesn't have this discovered, you know, counter check. Now we have again rook rook h to f7 is checkmate correct g4 is probably winning as well but not as well as this this is just absolute checkmate okie dokie well buddy what kind of beautiful moves do we have here we have, uh, I think we got a nasty move here. Queen to F1 check. We're going to basically finagle him to a bad square. Queen F1 check, King H2, Queen F4 check. The pawn is pinned by the rook. He can't even play G3 to block it. So he can play King G1 if he wants. It doesn't really matter because rook to c1 check, it's still checkmate. Yeah, that, that loses. It was checkmate all the way around. Interesting idea. Now, what? Looks to me like rook a3 check. He can't, well, he can... If he interposes the knight, rook takes free bishop. That's what my father would say. He is toast, I guarantee you. Rook a3 check. King to, I don't know. Let's just go h2 for the heck of it. Rook to c2 check. And then he's got a problem. Well, he could go king to g1. Rook h3 chain. Okay, and... I don't really see what we're getting much. We could just play also rook on two to a four, double attacking this knight. We're going to win a piece. There's nothing you could do about it. Well, nothing you do about winning the piece, but he might be able to queen the pawn. Let's look at this. What if he goes, you know, c6, rook takes knight, rook takes rook. Rook takes rook. C7, rook to C4, stops the queen. But he could play, well, E6. I don't know. That wins a knight for sure. That wins a knight. We could also play, there's another nasty move. Rook on C to C2 threatens rook to A3. Yeah, that's not really mating. It's almost mating. It looked like it was, you know, threatening a checkmate, but it really isn't because he's got two guys that can interpose here. But when, when the rook moves away from here, knight can interpose or bishop, and it doesn't lose a piece. Rook a3 check. <clears throat> he can play bishop to bishop to e3. And then can't do much thinking you know rook a3 check bishop e bishop g3 is the move <clears throat> because his rook guards his knight i can't overpower this knight with another rook move because he would just easily defend it so i'm thinking our only chance is to win this knight or this bishop whichever he wants to give us he cannot queen this pawn I already analyzed this. Rook c4 wins. You don't take the bishop. I never even considered taking the, I, the bishop. Now, I see that I could take that bishop, but my whole point was to win the knight 
and stop the pawn from queening. If you go back, you'll see that. I was never enticed to go for the bishop. All right, now this is a, a basic idea. You have two, two moves that you can make, a king move or a pawn move. If you make a pawn move, king to f6, and you're toast, you're going to fight for a draw. Now, the king move is king to g4. This puts black in Zutzvong, and that means he's going to make a bad move. He'd like for us to play king g4 and said, well, you could have a free move and play g6, and then again, king f6. But the problem is we're going to squeeze him where he cannot go there. So king g4, if he wants to try and queen his pawn, king to d4, we're just going to queen with impunity. He's going to be in a bad position. Now, queen, king g4, he could play king d6, and then we could play, well, actually, we could play king h5 and queen anyway. We're going to hit the, we can, we can run our king to the h7 shepherd square. So we can get our king to the shepherd square and cash faster than him. Takes him five moves the queen of duck, five pawn moves the queen. It takes us three. So this is the right move. Now the whole thing boils down to, I don't think we can win his pawn by force. So we should take the route of hitting, heading to the shepherd square. Now, do we go g6 first or king h5? I think g6. G6, King E7, King H5. He would go King to F8, King to eight. no. He can stop us. King H5. He can't stop us if he goes King King H5, King E7, King H6, King F8, King H7, Shepherd Square, and a win. We cannot play G6, King E7, and then King F8 will stop it. So our only moves. Or king to f4 or king to h5 and i think king h5 is winning e5 we can push the pawn so e5 push the pawn king e7 king h6 king f8 i mean that's, we have to be able to play king h7 whenever he gets to f8 so <clears throat> we could play king h6 which is good oh we have to play it actually g6 king f8 yes we have to play king h6 because we have to play king h7 we cannot allow him to get to g8 that will stop us so again box him out this is the shepherd square once we get king h7 our king supports the pawn all the way down and that is the key i'm the only guy that calls this the shepherd square and once you understand this terminology, it makes perfect sense. You're dead. I shepherd the pawn to victory. Oh, my internet connection KO'd. So let me reestablish. Don't ask me why. But it does this. So anyway, a lot of dog. We're back. All right. Now... Uh, dun, 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 dun. Reload this dude. And we're back. It's happened before. <clears throat> okay, we're back. A glorious solution. Oh, by the way, I'm a master and then some of King and Pawn End games, as you know. That's how I figured that out. You have to under you have to learn when to apply the principles that take precedence okay now i'm no bobby fisher but king to g1 threatens checkmate so king to g1 threatens rook h2 mate so he could play g3, but then I think h takes g4. I'm sorry, he could play g4. h takes g4 is also checkmate. So he could check me. In 
then I go king to h1, and yet again, no matter what he does, I checkmate him on the next move. So, looks pretty basic. King to g1. King to h1. King takes free bishop. Is that the winning move? Rook takes free bishop is the correct move, right? Actually, they might both work. King takes bishop. G4 is the only move. Check. Surely one of these moves is better than the other. Well, they both seem the same. Ah, king to g1 is better because rook to h2 is still mate. If I go rook takes bishop, rook to h2 is no longer mate. It's cheap as heck. These guys are these guys are cheap, so you have to do exactly what I did. You got to figure out which of these two is the more valuable. They would both win in the real world, really, but oh, whatever. Okay. Man, this position is, is one of my dad's rule number one positions. What's he threatening to do? That. Nasty move. Don't want him to do it. So I need to stop that, most likely. Pawn takes bishop. Queen takes pawn. So if I take his bishop, he's going to play this. I don't know if that's that devastating, but it looks pretty good. It looks hard to stop. Is what it looks like to me. He played king to h1, and I'm gonna get rolled with rook to g1. Okay, this is what I'm telling you. This is my dad's, my dad's chess gift to the world. What is he trying to do to me? So he's even to a certain degree threatening to play bishop takes g7, king takes queen g5, and get in smoking. And just, you know, smoke you. So I was like, ugh. Terrible. Well, let's look at the situation. We have three pieces. He's got three pieces. Two rooks and a queen. No biggie. Two, four, six. Two, four, five. He, bishop takes h6 is what he played? No. Okay. He played bishop takes h6 earlier. Whatever. So... One of the moves we have potentially, knight h5. Eee, I don't know about that. It's okay. Knight h7 is another one he could play. Like really queen to d3 if I play knight h7. So I don't like that at all. We could play queen takes d4. And that does kind of end the attack. You know, nothing, nothing special is happening. Or, or we could actually play, if we want to, knight takes d4, threatening knight f3. That is a possibility. Knight takes d4, queen to g5, threatening the mate. We could play knight to e8, defending the mate on g7, and then discovering a bishop attack against this queen. So knight takes d4 is a possibility. Queen to g5. Wow, now that isn't, queen g5 doesn't work. I just play knight takes pawn check. Forget that. So take this pawn. What are you going to do, Bobby? That's what I like to know. He's got to defend f3. And I'm threatening to also come back with knight to f5 and, and gain some defensive possibilities, perhaps. Threatening to take his bishop. Queen to d3, I would just take the bishop. Queen would take... Yeah, this knight to d4, I think, is a move that's a little more terrifying than it looks at first glance. Knight in the center of the board, a lot of targets to hit. You know, that, 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 that just annoy him in his attack mentality because it threatens to take this bishop. If I cash this bishop and then take this bishop, he's got problems, probably. 
but we're, we're, I don't want to work on probably. I want to work on sure. So what do we do? Knight takes d4. How does he defend? You know, knight, I mean, bishop e4, knight takes, bishop would be terrible for him. So he's got a problem of defending the pawn and the bishop. Queen to d1 would do both. I don't know, man. This move looks too good not to play it. Yeah, exactly right. So, exactly correct. Wow. Knight takes f3. Puts my queen discovering an attack on his queen. So I'm threatening to take his queen or trade queens. Not take it, really, but just trade queens. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I have another idea as well. Knight takes bishop, queen takes, and then we could play queen to d5 because his knight could, well, no, I don't like that. Knight takes knight, rook takes queen, and then knight takes queen, rook takes queen, knight takes e7, check, wins for him. So my queen d5 idea doesn't work. <sighs> knight takes f3 is tempting. Knight takes f3 is the move that either wins or loses. By far the safer move is knight takes c2. Because you can play knight takes c2, queen takes c2. Still don't think you can take the bishop. You might be able to, but it's it, you know it's it's risky. His his piece count is way down. He because now remember he's done. Work, I've made him do one of the things he wanted to do as king to h1. So that was a great defensive move combined with an attacking move, threatening rook to g1. So that's why I don't want to, well, knight takes f3 does stop rook to g1. Well, not really. Because he would just replace it with another rook. However, yeah, knight takes f3 does not stop rook to g1. Knight takes f3, rook to g1. Knight takes queen, rook takes check. King goes to here. The other rook can go here. I mean, I don't know. This is very dangerous. The computer could, could tell you this is, you know, one way or the other winning. To me, knight takes f3 is asking to lose. But it might actually win because of subtle calculation advantage that I don't like to actually do. Knight takes f3. He could just play rook to g1 anyway. Rook to g1. Knight takes rook. Rook takes knight. And then, you know, you're eating the full force of his attack. Every piece he has is on you. So you can't take the rook on g1. Knight to f5. Helps to a degree. Knight to f5 might be the move. Because it might force the queen trade. The structure for black is a little better than white. So we have knight to f5 forces the queen trade because we're threatening to just play at that point. Knight takes bishop. Knight takes h6 as the threat. So knight to f5 if he plays bishop takes f5 we trade queens and then take his bishop that's safe but it's not really necessary winning but sometimes these problems it's rare where you have to get safe king safety is number one in chess and i say that even grandmasters don't mention it enough So knight to f5 
forces a queen trade one way or the other. He could play queen takes queen. And now I can play rook f takes queen. He could play bishop takes f5. I could play queen takes. He plays bishop takes my queen. And I play e takes f5. And everything is all, you know, even. It seems unlikely that knight f5 is the correct move from the context that you don't have anything to show for what you're doing. The point of like knight takes c2, queen takes, I'm thinking pawn takes bishop is actually winning. Because he'd play rook g1 check, king h8, and then he's going to get a counter of a rook to g8 himself. To get the free bishop, we have to take this bishop. And then he just has got too many pieces too far away from the king. You don't only have a rook on the g file and the queen on the c2 square. And after I play king h8, he doesn't have much because I'm going to have defensive resources. I think that's the danger. It's like, do you have those resources or don't you? Because king h8, he's got queen to c1 threatening to take this pawn. And I could play knight to g8 defending the pawn. But does he play rook takes, king takes, queen takes h6? No, bishop to g5 would work. It looks to me like knight takes bishop, queen takes, pawn takes bishop is just enough to win. He's got threats, but they're not as devastating. I think they're all beatable. And nothing else works. This knight takes f3, I just don't think this is a good move. I think you're asking for it. Oh... No, knight takes f3, rook to g1. Knight takes is wrong. Queen takes queen is the move. Queen takes queen, bishop takes queen, knight takes rook, you're smoked. It is knight takes f3. He can't play rook to g1, not because you take this rook queen with the knight, but I think you take it with the queen and just smoke this guy in an endgame. At least that's how I would do it. I would play knight f3, rook g1, queen takes, bishop takes, and just, well, I can just take this bishop. If I want to take the bishop, I can just take this bishop and smoke him in the end game with an extra piece. Oh, well, I told you it was win or lose. Ugh. Well, this is fairly basic, I believe. He's got two, two sets of distant pass pawns. This king can stop this. He can't push this guy with impunity. He has to have the h5 tempo to do it. I'll tell you what happens here. f6 is no good. Eh, not no good, but it's inferior. Or is it? f6, king takes d6. And then... You play c5. Check. If he goes after king e6, you go c6. Yeah, and he can't stop both of those. Actually, I was thinking f6 is not good. Now I'm thinking, I was thinking originally c5 is better. f6 may just win. f6, king e6, c5, king takes f6. C6, you lose because you can't catch my C pawn. Well, actually, you can catch it. What a jerk. Yeah, I don't like F6. King to E6 is very strong. Well, King E6, D7, King takes C5. Can't get them both now. 
you know, he moves a pawn and then c6. But if he just moves this pawn, you know, I can catch it. I don't think that, I don't think it does necessarily much, but we can force him to do something different. So our moves are f6 or c5. Let's look at c5 first. c5, he can play whatever he wants. That's the problem. I think f6 is better. It forces East, king e6. Because what happens is this, this position here is a, forced, is a forced queen. He can't do anything about it. So he cannot allow f7. All right? That's the main threat that white has if he plays f6. We're playing f7. He's, he's smoked at that point. So f6, king to e6. d7, threatening to queen. He must capture the, the d7 pawn. And then c5. And now the one of those, the f or the c pawn will queen for sure. These are some basic, well, not basic, because it's semi-advanced. F6, king e6, d7, king takes d7, c5. The threat is c6, king takes c6, f7, and I queen. Or I could play f7, king e7, c6. It doesn't matter. That was the threat. This is the winner, because we want to keep, you want to keep your, your, your two pass pawns as spread apart as possible. F7 loses. King takes. You're not going to queen this. He, he can clean both of those. He's a short range guy. So you go D7. King takes D7. C5. On you. The splitting of the pawns is what wins for you. Well, you know, I'm going to play C6. You can take one. Which one is it? The wrong one. It doesn't matter. He didn't have a right one. <laughs> okay. This looks fairly basic. We have uh, actually I have a couple of moves. Queen checks inferior, right? We're gonna we're gonna try and get a bishop queen mate combo on g7. If I go queen f6, king g8 loses for sure to bishop h6. He doesn't even get he gets one check, and then we go here to h3 and then queen to g2 and then we take it and we just queen. Oh, we just checkmate him. But queen f6, king h7 is the best move. Now I play bishop h6. He defends us with king to g8. Let's see, does it work? Oh, I can't even play that move. I can't play queen here, king h7. He just takes my bishop. So that's garbage. Now I got bishop h6 check. That forces him to g8. He can't go to h7. Bishop takes free rook check. That's the move. Bishop h6 check. We also have queen h6 check. King to g8. Bishop to g5 is slow. He can play defensively like f5. So, eh, I think bishop, it takes more moves. That's why the machine is programmed that if it takes more moves, you lose. Bishop h6 check, king g8, queen f6, threatens mate after he checks us. We go to here, whatever, you're dead. Okay. Well, actually, you know, now bishop takes rook might not be the best move. The best move might be bishop to g5 check, Followed by bishop to f6, unstoppable mate. So bishop check here, eh, not the greatest move. It looked really good. Bishop to g5, check. If he plays king to g7, bishop checks, and then mate on h8. So bishop g5, king to g8, bishop to f6, and again, he checks me, and then checks me again, and after I take his queen, queen g7 is mate. So, bishop takes rook was a mistake. That's a 50. That separates the men from the boys. 
I mean, I'm a greedy guy. Like we all, you know, learn chess as kids, you know, we're greedy. I'm a greedy guy. I wanted to take this rook. And then I realized that that was, that was the trap. It's a trap. All right. <clears throat> My dad's rule comes into play yet again. What's he threatening to do to me? This move. And if I don't take it, Queen H2 is mate. Okie dokie. So, hmm, you see the problem. You see the problem. Now, I don't know, man. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Holy moly. I'm thinking we have a door opening. Rook takes d4. This is the move I'm looking at here. The reason is, look. This bishop and queen have a devastating attack on h8 or g7. So we're threatening, for example, rook takes here. Bishop captures. Rook takes h4. Which opens the checkmate diagonal as well as attacks his queen. So rook takes, rook takes. If he takes my rook, bishop takes and you're mated. There's nothing you can do. He's got, well, he can play bishop e5, bishop takes, rook takes, queen takes. So he would drop a rook for nothing. Then he could take this, and I just play queen takes, you're screwed. Rook takes is the monster. He cannot play the threat that my dad made me see, bishop takes g3. Because rook takes h4 is another, you're, you know, it's the inner, it's your inner Bobby Fischer that takes over or your inner Kasparov that takes over. So rook takes d4. Man, this has a Bobby Fischer or Gary Kasparov written all over it. Bam, what a great move this is. What are you doing, Bobby Fischer Jr.? He, he could play, he can't play rook e6 because rook takes d8. Check. Crunch. Yeah, this move is monster. It's monster. Wow, that's interesting. To be honest, I didn't conceive of this possibility. That's okay. I'm thinking queen h8 to attack this rook. King e7, bishop f6 check. He has to defend it because my queen's attacking it. King to d7, rook to d1 check. Uh-oh. You see it, the bishop up, rook takes check. So this is the move. Queen to h8 is the move because I'm attacking his rook. And after the checks are over, I'm going to take it. Checks are over. Goodbye. My inner Bobby Fischer. Now, I mentioned this to you guys before if you've seen my other videos. King is on his natural square. He makes the F, F square weakness. Knight on the fifth rank. Queen to the fifth rank. Check. In this case for black. Usually it'll happen in an opening where it's queen h4 check. But queen h4 check is a devastator. Because he can't go to f1. Queen f2 is mate. So this combo still works even though we're in a you know, late middle game or early end game. Because he plays he plays uh, g3, knight takes g3. And our knight is guarding this. He's not doing jack squat. So, goodbye, Charlie. Wow. That didn't... Okay, I told you it almost always works. I can't believe it didn't work. Let's see what happens. That's the one, one in a hundred positions where it doesn't work. Okay, e3 is mating. Oh, and I guess if he uh, takes the pawn, queen h4 is mating. 
Actually, I think Queen H4 is still winning, but this is checkmating. So checkmate trumps the regular win. My mistake. Okay, it is trade. The, it is trade off that and take that. That's what I thought was winning. King H1, H8. I said that, but I thought that was also going to work. No problems. It was very difficult. Way harder than you know anything else. That was the hardest problem in the whole setup. Now this was the rook takes, and then what? I thought knight e5 is winning. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I did see that knight b6 was useful. I forgot that it would be a double attack idiot. That was my mistake. Hey, they happen. You know, better here in a practice to remind you about it than in an actual game. But this does happen. In the turn of the game, I would have, you know, I wouldn't have done 40-something other problems. And... I would have spent more time. That's not an excuse. That's just a statement of how I would do it. So you got it. This is what tells you you've got to be really careful because I slipped on my on my concentration. I did actually see that knight to b6 was a move that would fork both of those earlier, but I didn't pay attention to that. So that is a mis that's a minor mistake that cost me to win. I didn't see, I couldn't see how knight e5 was really that good. Because he would just move the bishop, and that was correct. But like a dummy, I didn't, I didn't take that, I didn't take that realization that knight e5 isn't that great, and look for a better move, knight to b6, which I had seen earlier. That's what makes it bad, is that's a move I had literally seen and should have remembered it. Eh, mistakes were made. Look, when you make 50, 51, you don't complain. Do you know how many people would just pay money to play 51 victories once in their life? This is a tremendous video for helping you guys and showing visualization. Work on your visualization every day and then 50 becomes possible. Now it's not gonna happen overnight or in a short period of time, but this is the kind of thing you work on this, this visualization skill does not get old, it gets better. So if you stuck around, you saw some awesome moves, literally one of the best I ever played. With queen takes c3 check, you remember that? That was a killer move. Where was that move hiding? There we go. Yes, that was the that was the one that's 2269. That was a fantastic move. Well, this is an awesome sequence. You guys are going to profit from this. Tell your buddies this is going to set you on the new path of victory. I'm telling you. So it's a little over an hour and a half. It's one hour and 34 minutes almost. So you guys know what to do. Like the video, subscribe, tell your buddies. Because it'll help make them stronger. And when you play the stronger players, that helps make you stronger. So you guys are awesome. I'll see you later.